talk for dummies on the counter for men in cash box. Please is all I need. All right, say men at the register. He is uncomfortable. I can tell just now by the way he glances up from skinning costume as if to say, you are men. Why are you bleeding, please? This is not for me, I say, most laughing with more outward breath than noise, a laugh of variety, because it is culturally right for me to firmly say something stupid, and to pretend to realize it was stupid, and to then pretend to realize that I am embarrassed to have been so stupid. <laughs> so that is what I've done. And men of cash box follow tradition when he say, Shift 
Georgia and we won't have to do any more shipping. So the way the universe works in x Boston. Dark gray tides have been drooping down over the city since yesterday afternoon and they're finally starting to leak. Fat, lazy drops coast down the trailer windows, and as I'm peering out between them, out over the rooftops, I can see the Boston Harbor. It starts murmuring surface, smears the sky, and the moored vessels just laugh nervously to each other. Mama said all the beauty got an end. She told me that two years ago, when I turned in six, just before we leave Lono, Georgia, and our trailer, then we go to Lono. <laughs> and Lono, the Cherokee roses blossomed in March. Fragrant shrubs with white heart shaped petals and intense golden centers. They was pretty, but the romanticism stopped at the stems whose thorns bring two emergency room visits the spring before. One, a boy who sliced up in the top half of his pinky. The other, the only Mexican in the city, or the only Mexican married to a white lady in the city, or the only Mexican married to an old white lady in the city. <laughs> Told me he lost his mind sometime during the autumn before. That was when he started thinking he was God. I wasn't afraid of the Mexican like the rest, the, the rest of the kids riding bikes on account of him being my friend since he and Paul was friends because being together in the sanitation area 10 miles down the road. I decided it was okay to ask him what he'd been doing that same afternoon when the roses started rising. I pinched my eyes so they was almost closed, and I see them running from Mr. Whitaker's lawn, where the grass was greener, back to his own yard, where the grass ain't never been too green. The Mexican man was holding Mr. Whitaker's chair to raise his by the petals, and when I asked what he was going to do with them, he told me he was going to make a crown of thorns to put on his head. They was going to show all of everyone's godliness, he told me, not trying to have a lost mind like the kids on the sidewalk said. I couldn't tell you what a crown of thorns was, or what showing godliness meant if it hit me on the behind. And I ain't never reckoned I was sure about anything the Mexican man used to tell me with the voice he saw from Mexico. But his old lady wife told me that he wasn't going to be in Lone Oak no more after the ambulance took him to get the holes in his head filled up at the hospital. She said that after that, they was going to take him to the mental jail 30 miles yonder in Junction City and he was going to stay there till the day he died. But Mama did say all beauty got an end, like the Cherokee roses when their thorns broke the wholeness of Mr. Mexican's head, and the smile on Mrs. Perdomo's face when she see the ambulance and stole her husband away. She was the Mexican's wife, and Dr. Elkins told her no more driving after last June when the Mexican first showed his godliness by knocking Mrs. Perdomo down to one of the brown patches in her yard with a hoe. Her whole body didn't work too good enough for that. She got an ad name in the paper the day after the Mexican got stolen from her, and she started asking people in Lono to drive her to him for a whole afternoon, but the Mexican got put in bad light because of the front page story in the Times. It was all about why he got took to the mental jail. The paper spread a rumor about the Mexican. They say he lied when he heard God telling him to color his head with holes from thorns, but the Times, but the Times was the real one line. I ain't got no idea why the times was telling stories, but God don't lie to nobody, not the Mexican man either. Mrs. Perdomo was cutting shrubs in the brown yard when the Mexican stole the flowers that made him go to the other sanitation area. When she told me that her husband sometimes heard God, just like Paul did, and that the times ain't never heard God before, so they didn't understand nothing about it. So that must have been why they lied. They didn't never even try understanding this kind of shit, she said. She was telling me God was also the reason why the Mexican man struck the wrinkles in her forehead with his hoe about the year I turned at six. But Mrs. Perdomo said not to tell anybody about him being hit by him because that was a secret. She also told me a secret about the tiny red scratches co covering her forehead. They was there because that's where she got the stitches, almost like the ones Mr. Mexican had to get all around his head. But even though the Mexican man gave her red marks she didn't like too good on her forehead, she told me she still loved him. And Mama never did say love God in it. Okay, thank you.